If you change the way people see the world, you have the power to shape the perceived reality. Google Maps quite literally lives that reality. This atlas and cartographer contains what feels like an endless lattice of street names, their widths and types, house numbers and landmarks, a world that moves at the speed of your thumb. We make sense of our surroundings through this app. I like seeing what things exist in my city that I haven't seen before. I want to check out parking spots and menus before I go to the restaurant. I look at ratings and I read reviews before I book my stay. But this is not just me. Over 1 billion people use Google Maps every month. And this is the most downloaded navigation app in the world. It is so popular that we take it for granted. That expectation comes in a way from how the interface feels so natural now that most of us have stopped noticing it altogether. Yet the design of this simple map app is anything but accidental. Its color palette, font sizes, the thickness of its borders. Google Maps didn't derive it from the long traditions of cartography. Every element has been prototyped, debated, and tested until it fit neatly into our mental model Google wants us to hold. Those choices do more than steer commuters through traffic. They subtly craft our perception of distance, importance, and geopolitical reality. If people see geography through the prism built by Google Maps, then its interpretation of borders, landmarks, and locations matter. Critiques mark that the boundary between map and marketplace is eroding. What feels like a free atlas, accessible to all, is slowly turning into a social media. Suggestions page has turned into a for you page based on your search and interaction history. Some businesses rated and ranked higher than others. Millions of unpaid contributors supply maps with photos, reviews, and store hours. But in return, the company has turned it into a multi-billion dollar ad engine that influences decision making. So how exactly does this map work? What do its design choices, algorithms, and monetization model reveal about the forces that shape our sense of reality? Picture the planet balanced on a single tile. Scroll once and the resolution doubles as the tile effectively makes way for four more detailed ones. This is the secret pulse of Google Maps. Every flick of the mouse wheel or pinch on the phone screen doubles the map's linear resolution, carving the world into even finer tiles that seem beneath your fingertip like film frames in a projector. So a way to visualize Google Maps is like a tile pyramid, where each zoom level multiplies the number of tiles by four, and so on. Google Maps ensures labels and icons don't overlap by first imagining an invisible grid laid over the screen. Each feature, like a street name or a point of interest, has a priority, so the most important ones get placed first. When adding a label, the engine checks its proposed placement against that grid. If it collides with something already there, it tries a different position, for example, shifting the label slightly or skips it. Once a label is accepted, its exact area is marked on the grid so nothing else can intrude. This quick overlap check keeps text and icons clear and readable as you pan and zoom. As you zoom in and out, Google Maps dynamically adjusts which label appears and how they're arranged. At higher zoom levels, more detailed labels like street names or local businesses become visible, and there is more room on the screen for them. So the collision grid is recalculated with finer granularity. Conversely, 
When zoomed out, only major features, such as highways or large city names, are shown to avoid clutter. Other interactive elements like traffic overlays or transit lanes tie into the system too. Their icons and labels follow the same placement rules so that nothing overlaps unexpectedly. This combination of zoom-aware label selection and the collision grid makes sure the map stays informative and easy to read at every level. But this magic is built on a rigor of color. Google color codes everything for maps, designed so you can find things instantly, sometimes without even looking for them. Every hue, every shade is backed by studies in perception, a minimalist palette that still carries a wealth of meaning. Water is always hex 9FC 5E8, a tone tuned to catch peripheral vision at highway speed. Parks settle into B7E3A8, bright enough to read through a sun-splashed windshield, dull enough to not upstage labels. These choices aren't arbitrary. They are distilled from research on how we see. Buildings code human life in shades of gray and tan. Residential zones are light gray. There are individual houses popping out in dark blocks as you zoom closer. Airports and industrial campuses take on deeper gray and military bases in some regions mirror that same tone, roads and layouts giving them away. Red zones highlight hospitals from afar, spots of urgency on a calm canvas, then soften into tans and grays when you dive in, keeping the emergency glow at arm's length. Commerce blooms in tan light. Downtown cores and shopping districts crystallize in warm earth tones, contrasting residential coolness. Nature, too, has its palette. Beaches in dark tan, rivers in sky blue, deserts and mountains in spectrum of browns, Google calls natural sand or shrub. Two main greens split public parks from reserved wilderness. And if you turn on live traffic, the roads themselves pulse. Green for free-flowing lanes, orange for slowdowns, red and dark red for snarls, and a calm blue trail marking your chosen route. Behind every scroll and pinch, a tile pyramid is being manipulated. Clarity is the philosophy. Cognitive load must stay low. So when you see exactly what you need, one heartbeat before you realize you need it. Each rule carries a value judgment. What you notice, what fades away, how the world is framed in light and shadow. In a product that constantly reinterprets the globe, color is carefully calibrated to merge what is real and what remains virtual. Since its inception two decades ago, Google Maps has quietly evolved into one of the largest social media platforms on the planet. What began as a straightforward navigation tool now hinges on its local guides community. Over 120 million individuals worldwide who contribute reviews, photos, and edits in exchange for points, badges, and early feature access. Like a feed on Instagram or Yelp, Google Maps surfaces the freshest user-generated content at just the right moment. Swipe down a restaurant listing to see recent dining snapshots. Or tap on a shop pin to read the latest review from someone who was there yesterday. These contributions are the lifeblood of the platform's relevance and richness. Yet the work remains unpaid and often uncredited beyond a tiny badge next to the reviewer's name. Google Maps isn't a philanthropic endeavor. It has turned that volunteer-driven tapestry into cold, hard cash. In 2023, Maps generated an estimated 11.1 billion in revenue, with 82% coming from location-based advertising, promoted pins, sponsored search results, and display banners embedded in the map canvas. 
Contributors supply the photographs, ratings, and local knowledge. Google packages it all into ad products that command premium rates from businesses eager to reach potential customers at the point of discovery. The result is a classic two-sided market. Guides provide free content and data, while advertisers foot the bill. Yet only Google reaps the financial upside. That imbalance carries real-world consequences. Business owners can challenge negative reviews through automated systems, sometimes triggering removal that skew the public record and erode trust in crowdsourced insights. On the user side, studies have shown how anonymized location data, even from innocuous check-ins, can be re-identified to reveal home and work addresses, raising the specter of stalking, discrimination, and target surveillance. Volunteers may upload sensitive images or inadvertently expose patterns in their movements, unaware that every pin dropped and photo snapped feeds into Google's broader profile of their habits and routines. We've also saw a lot of consolidation of power and concentration of power. Uh, the D Justice Department right now has a lawsuit against Google for basically making a whole set of acquisitions that they allege have now monopolized the digital ad tech suite in ways that is now really harming publishers and advertisers alike. This ad-driven architecture has drawn antitrust scrutiny. In April 2025, a federal court ruled that Google's dominance in digital advertising technology of which MAPS is a linchpin, amounts to an illegal monopoly under the Sherman Act. The judgment highlighted how Google leverages user contributions and location data to tighten up its grip on the ad market, squeezing out rivals and dictating terms to publishers and advertisers alike. For millions of contributors, Google Maps is a shared canvas, and yet the profits, the policies, and the data controls lie firmly in Alphabet's hands. As regulators circle and communities explore open alternatives, the central question remains, can a single corporation sustain the commons it did not pay for? Or who does the map's future belong to? The owner or the laborer who built it together? Maps have always been political documents. Digital distributions have magnified their reach and complexity, though. View this peninsula from an IP address from here, and Google draws a solid border indicating who it belongs to. The line switches to a dotted dispute marker. The underlying landform doesn't change, only the map's metadata does. That cartographic choice reinforces a narrative about sovereignty with each refreshed tile. Similar compromises lay out worldwide. To remain accessible in local app stores, Google Maps complies with regional legislation, effectively offering multiple truths depending on the viewer's location. Users seldom realize they are seeing a curated geopolitical perspective. After all, a border style looks like a mere design detail. This mutable reality raises ethical questions if a corporation wields the power to define territorial integrity for billions, what obligations accompany that power? Google maintains that its policy is to show disputed regions objectively, yet objectivity can never be absolute. The selection of a dotted line over a solid line can validate or delegitimize a national claim. Some scholars argue that such decisions belong in the realm of international diplomacy, not private product roadmaps. But until a global standard emerges, the invisible hand of UI designers and legal teams will continue shaping nationhood one pixel at a time. With immersive view, Google has started rendering entire cities as photorealistic 3D experiences. User can glide along Tokyo's elevated expressways, watch real-time traffic beneath translucent overpasses, and glimpse dynamic weather effects rolling across rooftops. 
the result feels closer to a flight simulator than a flat map. Behind the scenes, the company stitches satellite imagery, photogrammetry, and AI-generated textures into a persistent model and ambitious data that could fuel urban planning simulations, autonomous vehicle routing, or augmented reality applications none of us can yet imagine. As location-based advertising expands, another layer of influence emerges. A sponsor pin can now appear above organic search results, nudging foot traffic towards brands that pay for the privilege. Critiques mark that the boundary between map and marketplace is eroding. If commercial interests shape what roads look like, what happened to the commons, the ideological contest over who owns the representation of space, governments, corporations, or communities is only intensifying. Google Maps is useful, it is important, it is also free, and it is most widely adopted for navigation, business, and third-party apps. I love using it in my free time, looking at the streets and billboards around the world. It has been a success story, and most of its services are useful to average citizens. But it is also a for-profit mission. So things you see might have two meanings, and I don't know where the line is.